Welcome to the Dr. Lori Morris podcast, where she interviews experts in health and science, sharing their expertise so you can live your healthiest life. This episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by Fit Vegan Coaching, the world's leading whole food plant-based body recomposition program for Gen X and baby boomers. Founded by Maxime, whose personal journey began after losing his ex fiance to breast cancer, Fit Vegan Coaching is on a mission to disease-proof the world through the transformative power of plant-based eating and fitness. This program is a Rolls Royce of plant-based coaching, offering all-inclusive services, personalized plans, world-class accountability, lifelong support, and more. Say goodbye to the yo-yo dieting and embrace a lasting transformation that will rev up your metabolism even post-transformation. Ready to take charge of your health and vitality? Head over to fitvegan.ca, that's fitvegan.ca, and mention Dr. Lori for exclusive bonus savings when you sign up. Don't miss this opportunity to join the movement towards a healthier, fitter, and more vibrant you. This episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by The Healing Kitchen, your path to vibrant health. Immerse yourself in the transformative program, guided by the combined expertise of myself, Dr. Lori Marbus, and Chef Brittany Giroudi, who has lost 70 pounds on a whole food plant-based diet. Here's what's in store for you. Virtual weekly sessions. Engage in an immersive 60-minute virtual session every single week, where you'll delve into the world of wholesome plant-based goodness right from your own kitchen. Cooking with Brittany the first half hour. Unleash your inner chef as you're captivated by Chef Brittany Giroudi's culinary mastery that will delight your taste buds and nourish your body. Medical Q&A with Dr. Lori the last half hour. Prioritize your well-being during the second half hour. I will personally address your medical inquiries, providing evidence-based insights and personalized advice, empowering you to make informed choices for your health. So join us on the Healing Kitchen to help you step into a healthier and most vibrant future. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm really excited to talk about someone who's not any, you know, just their story in a plant-based world, but what they're providing is a resource for parents. So if you guys are grandparents or parents, you'll definitely want to take a listen. So welcome, Margo Freitag. How are you today? Thank you. Hi, I'm fine. How are you, Dr. Marvis? Oh, Lori, please. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Well, I think it's really fun when you're going to be very relatable to people and just hearing your own story and then this amazing book that you put together to help people understand the value of cooking with their family in the kitchen. But we'll get to that in a second. But could you okay. tell us a little bit about yourself and how you sure. ventured into this green world? <laughs> sure, sure. I'd be happy to. You know, um, my story starts way back. I, I, I really struggled with my health as a young person. I had asthma, um, significant asthma. It was quite debilitating at times. And uh, I grew up kind of, uh, I really struggled in high school with uh, my health. You know, I had terrible lung health and bad allergies and brain fog and chronic fatigue. And uh, you know, I, I it, my parents tried everything. They really did. I remember my mom putting cheesecloth over the grates of the fern, you know, the the forced air to f- help clear the clear the air. And they just tried everything, and and there was there was just no help. Um, and what was really interesting though is that every my mom would also often bring up the fact that one year it was 1973 we spent a year living in Australia. And uh, that year, I was seven, so that dates me, but uh, that year, uh, I didn't have asthma at all. And so my mother would always, you know, speculate, she would say, you know, I, I, I," she, she didn't really know what, but she would often say, gosh, that year, you didn't have any asthma. And then we returned to Canada, and everything resumed. And that kind of went on, I really did uh, it, you know, when I was little, there was no such thing as Ventolin inhalers. And so my parents would rush me to the emergency room, I'd get a shot of norepinephrine in my arm, and then they would give me some steroids and often put me in a croup tent, pump me, pump, pump it with oxygen. And uh, so it was a bad, it was, there were a lot of bad years, but 
when I got into my 20s, I actually moved out to the West Coast and was finding myself. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was into sports. I still was able to, you know, Ventolin in hand, go for a run. And uh, anyway, I was studying to be a massage therapist. And it was just fate. I ended up having Brenda Davis as a nutrition teacher that year. So if you can imagine, I had who gets Brenda Davis for an entire semester, right? And that was back in 96. And uh, I think she was like this budding vegan dietitian at the time. And her class really was a game changer for me. Um, I didn't make all the changes. I was definitely a cheese addict at the time. But uh, several years later, when I became a mother and my own child was diagnosed with asthma, uh, I sort of had this, this knowing in the back of my mind. I, I, I knew what we needed to do. And we did this cold turkey plant-based thing. And within just days, we were asthma-free. So it was a profound change, life changing, and I went on to do the uh, the T. Colin Campbell Nutrition Studies program, and uh, it it really became a, a driving force in my life because, you know, uh, all of those years I struggled. It wasn't just my my health. Everything you know, when you don't have your health, everything uh, is is affected. So it became kind of my mission to help people. And, uh, and I gave up a teaching career and a massage therapy career to, um, to focus on plant-based nutrition and, and helping people with their health and plant-based mm-hmm. nutrition. So tell us a little bit about what you've actually done in the plant-based world. Like what are your services available or is other things? And then we'll jump into the book, but I love your story. It's so yeah. phenomenal to see um, how you not only took care of your own health, but you know, with that of your little one, well, I'm assuming is an adult at this point. He's now, yeah, he just turned 22. (laughs) Uh, When I first got into the plant-based world, I started with uh, doing um, programming in my own community. So I was doing uh, cooking classes and um, lectures. I had a little program that I set up uh, a little 30 day challenge and I had a lot of people join and it was really quite fun and successful. And, uh, but then, you know, I live in a small town, so those resources were limited. What's really interesting, Lori, is that um, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of people in the healthcare world uh, take part in my little class, mm. but I couldn't get physicians to join my class <laughs> mm-hmm. and I actually sat down with a cardiologist once and and um he had his whole staff come and do my program but he wouldn't come but anyway I'm sure you have lots of experience with that sort of thing mm-hmm. It'd be oh, interesting yeah. to talk about yeah <laughs> uh so so but when that was exhausted because I live in this small community, I just I didn't know what else to do. And and um I discovered that I could maybe do something online. And so I started with summits, and that's where I met you. In fact, I remember contacting you and you were driving across the country, moving. <laughs> and uh and you were, you know, you and I chatted about being on the summit and you did that. So I I did summits and um I sort of built a following that way. And then I offered programs and my programs really, I asked my, my, uh, my, my subscribers what they wanted most. And it seemed that most of them wanted to lose weight. So I ended up doing weight loss for uh, quite a few years and weight loss with plant-based nutrition. And you know, the learning never ends. What I discovered was, yes, people wanted to eat plants and they understood the value of plant-based nutrition, but the habits were the big thing. Habits and behaviors were were a real struggle. And, um, and around the same time that that was happening, my kids were in school, I was teaching also, and uh, I could see that the habits and behaviors that start really early that are hard to break, um, we're already impacting children. You know, my kids were in elementary school. I could see um, 
the kids who were struggling with their ability to focus and their happiness, even in their well-being, um, their their ability to learn, all of these things start with how well you feel. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of where the book came into play. Mm -hmm. um, I had this idea for a long time. In fact, so long, I talk about procrastination. I um, wanted my own children in the book. <laughs> and then they grew up <laughs> and they couldn't be in the book anymore. Um, so I finally got it together and got the book going. And it, really the, the idea behind the book was to, uh, it was more of a teaching book so that I could inspire children to want to get into the kitchen and uh, start developing habits and behaviors early on so that they weren't confronted with the same kinds of problems and challenges that adults are when they want to change their diet. Mm. So can you tell us about the book and the premise and what uh, people can expect when they, when they get it? Yeah. So it's a book of 28 recipes. I have, I have it right here. <laughs> this is plant powered punks. And uh, it's really a book that is intended to be a teaching cookbook and so it's just got 28 recipes and they're, they're all vegan. They're all plant-based. Some of them do have a little oil. Some have a little bit of sugar or sugar substitutes, but it's not, it, it, the idea was to meet people where they're at. And it's, the intention is not to, you know, veganize children. The intention is to set kids up with uh, good, healthy habits early on. Um, and and the idea is to have parents on hand and with their children and doing this together. So um, I have this little, I can show you. Um, <laughs> you can kind of open it up at any page and see, I'll just show you. There's a little beat beside all of the steps where parents uh need to be on hand and give and, and give some help so you know it's just about keeping kids safe and making sure the the experiences are positive and it's all broken up into steps um, when I was a little girl I had a, a cookbook that was broken up into little steps and it made it so much easier so I wanted to kind of um do that same thing and I just believe that if children have uh, play a role in making the food and they experience hands-on what it what they're dealing with the ingredients they're dealing with it's going to be a very different uh, result you know I mean you can put a bowl of chili in front of a child and they may or may not eat it right so <laughs> just based on not knowing what's in there and and not being familiar with the ingredients but I really believe that if children are familiar with the ingredients, if they have experiences, you know, smelling and touching and tasting and feeling the ingredients, and then the experience of putting those things together and actually creating something, I think it's a, it makes a big difference. Mm. No, that makes complete sense. I think that's, would be the experience of so many people who have raised children in the plant-based space. So can you tell us a little bit about your own family? Like when you were raising them, how did you approach your kids in with cooking and everything else? Yeah. So, you know, when we first got started, um, you know, I remember saying to my children, um, you know, you don't have to eat. I used to make salmon for them and they hated it. And I would try mm. and, you know, omega threes, we got to get, you know, and they just hated it. And I remember saying, you don't, you don't have to do that anymore. And they were, were like, yay, no more, you know, we don't have to do that. And I said, and you know what, we're going to try not to eat cheese anymore. And it was like, boo, <laughs> you know, everybody wants the cheese. So we, we did find some cheese substitutes. It wasn't like it is now. I mean, we're just going back 10 years and I live in a small town in Canada you know, we just didn't have all of the cheese substitutes, but we, we investigated and we made, we made changes and we, we shifted and, and um, my children thrived. I mean, they basically have grown up on a plant-based diet, except, except for those very early years. 
and uh, and they they were very healthy. There were never any major health issues, never any weight issues. They were athletic. Um, you know, I don't mean to brag, but they were they did well in school, and there were just no problems. They were very happy and well balanced, and uh, it it was all good. It's all good. Mm. How old are your kiddos now? Uh, nineteen and twenty two. Perfect. Yeah. So mine are 29, 27, and 23, or 25, wow. sorry, 25, 27, 29. Emily will be 30 in March. And so they were, uh, I didn't start as early, I but uh, kids were 13, 15, and 18. And wow. um, I will say the same thing, at least to those teens, at least with my boys, because Emily went off to college, but um, the boys, they were great, right? They were very active athletic never had weight issues they did very well in school um went on to finish college like so yeah the kids are amazing and I know three women right now who are pregnant with their plant-based babies those many let's see one has already had one who's um, he's five that's Louie and then another one who's had two other children that were all plant-based and another one that's her first one and they're doing amazingly well yeah. their pregnancies go well the children yeah. are born healthy and yeah. it's such a, you're so right on with these habits. So what do you think are the important tools or lessons that kiddos need to learn when it comes to nutrition, like in the kitchen? Like what are some of the things that you found to be that really stick? Uh, well, I think, you know, simplicity, simple ingredients put together is uh, it, you, it's a win-win. You know, um, actually, there's a, a pesto recipe in in this book that my my son actually um, we modified from an early recipe many years ago that had cheese in it. We substituted nutritional yeast, and uh, you know what? He made it last night. Oh, and he awesome. is 22 <laughs> years old, and he's still that. It's just something that he'll have for the rest of his life. You know, mm -hmm. it was his favorite recipe when he was little and he yes. was making it then, and he's still making it now. So I think, you know, just the, and, and, you know, there's sort of like five ingredients and you throw them in a food processor and away you go. And, uh, it, it just can make, it just can make it fun because it's easy and, it's delicious. So that it's just a win-win. So I think that whole idea of keeping it simple, making the in the uh, the experience positive and creative, uh, you can't you can't lose. I mean, it, these are things that they take with them for life. Is that was that what you're asking? I kind of yeah. I think keeping it simple is a great one. I also think um, at least in my experience, and we even did this before we were plant based because we ate pretty plant predominant already, like plant leaning, I should say, because that's yeah. kind of how I grew up with a lot of beans and potatoes and grow your own garden. Was mm. also gardening to let them yes. see the growth um yes and then um uh, at least in the united states i think every parent has their child they take the little lima bean and they put the wet paper towel and they put it in a jar and they watch it go. Yeah. Like yeah um but yeah i think grocery shopping is also another big one let the kiddos right. uh try different things um but right. yeah so I, I love that you put them in the kitchen early. There's so many benefits to doing that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have to say this, the grocery shopping is a big one. So we as a family made it a mission to make grocery stores uh, part of our road trips. We did a lot of traveling when the kids were small. And in order to make sure they ate healthier, we would make grocery shopping part of the adventure and to this day my kids we don't have like a whole foods or a trader joe's or we don't have any of these fun grocery stores where we are so to this day it's still you know a fun thing for my kids to do when we go to the mm -hmm. states we you know drive and and stop at grocery stores and try different things and check out their delis and um and so grocery shopping is uh is like a 
a travel goal. Like, we, <laughs> and I think it's a really, really important, you know, um, uh, and it, it just does play a big role. And then kids get that whole experience. They not only are they part of choosing a recipe maybe and, uh, and deciding what they want to eat instead of being told what they're going to eat. And then maybe going to the grocery store and getting the groceries and, you know, also discovering, uh, making choices, finding out about costs and, and how much things are mm -hmm. and how much of something you might need. And, um, just all of those experiences, you know, and then coming home and actually making the thing, I think, all of it, you know, if, and for parents, after a while, it can feel like drudgery. But if you have a child, that, <laughs> you know, what's tonight? Right. But if you have a child that's, that's um, with you and participating, uh, it can be a big deal. It can, be, uh -huh. it can be a lot of fun. I would also add that, um, you know, we, sh we need to take advantage of some of our, some of these, the natural things phenomenon of being children so for example my children would come home from school and they would be hungry and right. so it was an opportunity to cut up vegetables and we just made that what we did every day after school the kids would come home they'd either watch a show or look at some homework and they'd each get a plate of vegetables and uh and you know just that's just like a little healthy a healthy hack that we found really worked. So if we, if you take advantage of, you know, those things that their hunger, um, their favorite tastes, uh, their desire to be creative, just all of these things can, can play a huge role in, in helping uh, them to, to be healthy. Right. Well, all those things also really tap into, like you said, their natural curiosity states. And so all, if you can get the kiddos curiosity, they could almost be the pool for the parents to transition to a healthier diet. Cause I, I was, I can't remember who I was interviewing. Um, I think it was someone from Boulder, Chef Anne, I think if I recall, anyway, so they were having school gardens and yeah. what the kids were doing is they were bringing home these vegetables or they would ask their parents, mom, I want to go eat this vegetable. And the parents are like, oh, you're asking for vegetables. <laughs> for vegetables. Okay. All right, this is great. So because they were learning things at school. So the more that we can expose them in different elements, I think that's really, really key and important too. But I'm curious for, you know, this you know, home is one thing, like we control that. That is our, that is our environment. What about outside? So how did your kiddos you know, translate what they were doing at home to the outside world? How did you navigate that as a parent as well? Yeah, lots of really interesting things there. So first of all, I don't know what, what you, you, you were like, but we um, decided that the way this was going to work for it to be successful was to not be too extreme. And, you know, if my children were going to go to a, a birthday party and they wanted to have the cake and the ice cream, uh, we always, we, we just didn't make yeah. a fuss about it. it. Like it just, you know, we live in a world where that's, it's just everywhere. So, um, and, and even treats now and again, mm, I don't know, but you know, my, my son played hockey and you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this in the States, but it seems like kids sports center around a lot of junk food parties. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, a pizza, yeah. pizza every yeah. time you turn around. Mm -hmm. And I was really impressed. You know, my son would often order pizza without cheese mm -hmm. um, or, you know, depending on where they went, he would get a vegan cheese. And uh, I think that he was he ended up being quite proud of that. You know, it's kind of his little thing. And, um, you know, I think sometimes he had the cheese and mm. that's, what are you going to do? But it wasn't his first choice. Mm. And so we didn't, we, we, uh, we just kind of tried to give them the foundation and, and develop a, a taste that we wanted them to develop a taste for healthy food. Mm -hmm. And then we let them kind of go and do their thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. What did you do? 
Uh, exact same thing. So, I mean, they're teenagers and, you know, they already understood. We already had the relationship as a parents with parents and being the kiddos that, you know, the rules are at home. This is what we're going to do. Like they, they just, yeah. this is the way it is. Like, there's no argument. Like my aunts were very, I think I got off easy with my kids. They were just like pretty well behaved and we're very respectful. Yeah. We still have very close relationships now. And um, what we did was like, Hey, at home, this is why we're doing this. And we went overnight, you know, 12 years ago and um, out, out of the house, yeah, I'll do what you want, but I guarantee you're not going to feel good. And so that's what they learned. Right. So uh, what was interesting yeah. just as the, at, at home though, I was always educating and trying to un- make them understand. Cause I was really hoping that as they grow into adulthood, that they would adopt this way of eating. Now, Emily took a little bit of time. She's a doctor actually. Wow. And so I think part of her reason was one to teach her patients because she understands the health consequences, but also for the environment. So that was her main reason. Jonathan, my middle one, is more, he goes, it's just what's best for my health. He's like, yep. And then my youngest, he's kind of like, he was very active in baseball, um, but he was like, he liked wearing the hat of being the only vegan in his school. But what was cool though, was he's my ethical vegan. This kid is straight Uh up animal welfare and climate like he's like he makes good healthy choices but it's a very emotional driven for him like he's Mm -hmm. my my one but um Mm -hmm. my outside from the anus but yeah what was fun though is after I think about a year it took about a year um we started noticing when we went to go out to eat they would order tofu instead of chicken um you know so they were making these independent choices and I'm like sweet <laughs> like I've yeah. made some roads and roads <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> you know all that hard work paid off yeah yeah, yeah. They, you know when it seems like they're not listening they're really listening uh, they're and, watching they're and watching. they're watching and they're yeah. watching that's they're, a huge deal you know um I think I think when we talk I'm, I'm actually putting together a little course right now on on picky eating and one of the things that, uh, you know, we, we have to really pay attention to is modeling and our yep. kids are watching us, you know? Yeah. 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 And I think it's really important. Parents shouldn't be afraid to parent. And so we've gotten into, at least in the States that, you know, culturally speaking, that it's, it's like, they're almost afraid to have children be upset or, you know, it's like, you yeah. know, you, you're going to, you need to lead in the home. And uh, they're like, I, I've had physicians who switched to a plant-based diet and they're like, yeah, I'm doing great, but my kids don't want to eat this way. Or I'm like, go, oh. I ask them, how old are your kiddos? Thinking they're going to say like my kids, right? Where they were older teenagers right. or teenagers. And uh, they're like, oh, four and eight. <laughs> Whoa. I was yeah. like, I'm dying. I was like, explain to me, how does a four and eight-year-old dictate what you're going to be eating? And anywhere <laughs> you know maybe the eight-year-old might go to school and have something okay that's outside but a four-year-old they're like well they like the chicken nuggets and like no you allow them to like the chicken it's like stop right. eating them that stuff and i don't know two weeks or so they'll eventually get over it yeah it's gonna be a rough two weeks mom and dad and you're gonna have to deal with some stuff but mm-hmm. would you want them to deal with type 2 diabetes early on or heart mm-hmm. disease or all these other things that you're literally paving the road for or do you yeah. want them to be challenged with healthy habits I was right. like there's just some points you just gotta you gotta face the music and say okay I did the best I could until I know but now you know do better and right so, right yeah. right I've had the same experience I had a, a doctor acquaintance pediatrician <laughs> oh who, yeah who uh you know said his kids like kid food and so he mm. referred to all of the junk that isn't kid food as kid food. Wow. And uh, so I don't really, I, I don't really get it, but, yeah. but everybody's like you said, you know, we have a choice when you know better, do better. Do better. And so, you know, no judgment because sometimes people are busy and it, it's not at the top of the list. And I get that, you know, people get their kids to sports and it interferes with dinner hour and the best way to, you know, deal with that is to go through a drive-through or, mm-hmm. you know, it, it seems sure. that way, but it just takes some 
for some planning and forethought and right. and then I think we can uh we can make big headway and you know it pays dividends mm -hmm. if your children grow, grow up with healthy habits and mm -hmm. and an understanding of what healthy food is it mm -hmm. really I think it's so important mm -hmm. so yeah yeah no I mean you know if you have a child that's having attention deficit disorder issues, this constipation that won't go away, eczema, asthma. So these are health related problems. So, you know, the epigenetics piece is such an important thing, kind of like, you know, I'm curious what you guys did in Australia for that year. Did you not consume yeah. dairy or less different types? I, I don't know, but mm -hmm. uh, it's really this environmental component, right? So we understand that what we Put our children in their bodies has a consequence so all of these things saying something's not right inside there's inflammation going on inside the body we need to think about what are those things that we're turning on and off different genes that cause different disease states and so yeah there's a lot going on yeah there's a lot going on but i'm it's amazing what diet can do i'm, I'm pretty sure the diet in australia was really a lot of tropical fruits, passion fruit and pineapple and, you know, whatever it was, but it was just a healthier diet. I mean, I don't remember, you know, I was seven, so I don't right. remember if, if there was cheese or not, but I, re I do remember having passion fruit in my lunch every day. Mm. And so, um, you know, I think food has a lot to do with it. You know, my mother was a, an educational psychometrist, and uh, I remember her research. She did some research showing that um, she they could predict future dropout rates in students who struggled with, um, you know, undiagnosed or untreated behavioral issues or health issues early in life, like in elementary school. Wow. And, um, it, you know, I would argue that the same goes for uh, obesity, um, and diet and lifestyle related, uh, illnesses yeah. or, or conditions like asthma. Um, and then all of these things, like you mentioned, ADHD, uh, all of these things. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the process stuff, like artificial color, uh, a lot of the chemicals and preservatives that are put in processed foods, they actually cause these things. They cause yeah. ADHD and they cause asthma. And, and I could tell you if, if I have, and it's happened, um, if I have something with artificial color in it, I'll get asthma. Mm. Um, there are oh, certain things, it's certain things will, will trigger. So um, yeah, I think you're right. I think we, we really, our kids, they can't decide. Little ones, a four-year-old can't decide. Right. They just know what they like. And when you're when you're when a little one is used to foods that are made with a lot of fat, sugar, and salt, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a harder battle, but it can be done. Yeah, no, it can. But I know at least when I was a kiddo, and I'm assuming the same for you that when we were in school, it was very rare to see someone overweight, right? We might yes. see the one child or two, but as now, when you look at the most more recent data, it's 20% of American children are overweight or obese. Yeah. And it's starting at an earlier age. I remember when I was still doing regular family medicine and in-person clinic, um, the youngest uh, patient I saw was 12 or 13 with type two diabetes due to obesity. And it just breaks my heart to think that, you know, imagine the future and the child one, their lifespan is shortened because you've now diagnosed with this particular disease and the chronic disease elements. I mean, they're going to hire us for heart disease, cancers, uh, kidney disease. I mean, are they going to even live to be 50? Um, so it's such an important piece that, you know, parents will come up with excuses not to do this, but this is the best way you can show love is setting them up with these amazing habits and foods that will prevent suffering. And if we look at this as suffering and yes. eating these foods, you're, you're, this is the antidote to future suffering. Now it doesn't mean that things won't still happen, but you're decreasing the odds and risk by a significant number. 
So we really need to think about this. Every good healthy food your child's consuming is decreasing their future risk of literally suffering from chronic disease. And it's just, I'm, I really want to emphasize the word suffering here because that's exactly what it is. It causes so much struggle for even adults. Um, yeah. Imagine being a child and you've dealt with disease, chronic disease your whole life. That is a really tough thing. So anybody who's ever had a child maybe with something that is more like cystic fibrosis or if they have some other like type one diabetes, even still that's autoimmune, it makes you wonder. There's some yeah. genetic component, but there's some environmental components there, but some other type or cancers, early childhood cancers, that's really hard, right? These kids are really having to put a lot on their plate. I'm sure children are so resilient. Um, and so they'll do okay if you change what's on their plate, I promise. Yeah. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> excuse me. And I would add that the, the, Physical suffering is so, so important. And the emotional suffering, probably equally important as far as, you know, living in a, a body that you don't feel good in, um, lugging around weight that you that prevents you from participating in sports and doing yeah. things that other kids are doing. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's just well, doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. So you have the emotional, the physical, and then the mental, right? So my right. introduction into a plant-based world was accidental. When I had a patient mention me eating dairy upset her stomach, she, she went on to eat plant-based, but her daughter who was 16 at the time did as well. And then actually over 30 days, they came back for her mom's follow-up and her daughter came with her and she goes, you know, I felt so well that I yeah. stopped both my ADD medications in 30 days. 30 I'm days. Just, I'm just sitting here thinking how many other kids are being put on medications thinking that, oh, you need to be on these medications because there's something wrong with your brain when actually it's just an input of yeah. nutrients in you know what were foundational for kids to survive and live. Um, yeah. is, it's it's, it's uh, such an awakening that I, I hope people understand that we can make kids not have to worry about taking medications and, you know, whatever, you just need to change your attitude about food and what it's meant for, which is fueling your body. Right. That's right. an important piece. Which is, which is challenging in today's world because of all of the, the crap, excuse my language, but, but, no, you know, it's, the, the it's crap. Food, right? Exactly uh, right. And, and, uh, I just don't know, um, it's challenging to get through it and it's also very possible and the yeah. feeling that you have with being healthy on the other side of all of that is just mm -hmm. you can't compare and then you're right you mentioned earlier your children would go and they would have the thing and then they would feel lousy afterward mm -hmm. and it, it, the same goes you know if you if you just can put those pieces together and identify hey i mm -hmm. i had this yesterday and today I feel terrible. Um, yeah. I think that's it, just. It's, it's really interesting though. You're when you, when you raise your child to be super healthy and eating, right. And you're blessed with healthy kiddos. Um, and they do go partake in things that other kids are doing. They're going to learn very quickly. They're going to be in touch. Kids are way more in tune. And I think intuitive eaters already for the most part. Um, yeah. And it, they'll say like, Hmm. I don't think it's as hard for them to put it together as maybe adults because <laughs> yeah, adults are dealing right. with so many other things. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, gosh, this has been fantastic. So can you please share, um, we'll have the links below where people can find you and, and get the book. Oh, sure. So, well, the, the website is just like the book. Um, it's plantpoweredpunks.com and the book is everywhere. So it's at Barnes and Noble or Canada at Indigo. It's on Amazon. Uh, so wherever, uh, but you have to order it. My experience has been that um, as a self-published author, uh, it's harder to get books stocked. So it's an order book. Like if you go to Barnes and Noble, you can order it online. Uh, and then I, I did, you know, I know you have a membership, don't you? Do you have a membership? Membership to... Do you have a, you have a, I thought you had a plant-based membership. Um, uh, you mean my own? 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I have yeah. people prescribe to different things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I had I anyway, I just um I started a membership site nice. and it's really for parents and teachers and it's uh it, it's filled with all sorts of resources. And um, I, I just started it. So that's something that might be interesting to if you're a teacher or a parent and you want mm. some resources for helping uh, get getting your kid going in the kitchen. Um, it's associated with the book. There's lesson plans for teachers mm. and um, yes. all sorts of th goodies there. So that's uh, that's available on the um, on the website as well. Cool. I so, love that you're combining your teaching and everything yeah 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 cool. what were you gonna say I'm sorry um no I think that's it I just um if people just go to if they want to subscribe they'll um they'll get sort of directed when they get there um and also I have a couple of uh courses coming out one is a picky eater course uh mm -hmm. how to get your how to turn your kids into healthy eaters who love plants and then the other one is uh, on um, restoring lung health and, and, uh, recovering mm. from asthma with plant-based nutrition. So oh, great. The, yeah. And they're not ready yet, but when people subscribe, they'll be the first to know. Awesome. So definitely guys check it out. If you are a parent or grandparents or no parent, someone who's expecting, you know, this is great. Get sooner you get started, the better. So Thank you, Margot, for joining us today. This was Thank really you. great. And I, I know you're going to be super successful with everything that you're doing. Oh, thank you so much.